In this class, you will probably not be surprised to learn we're going to be using the metric system. And you're probably fairly familiar with this, but I just want to go over a little bit um, about it and kind of how I think about the metric system. So like any system, there are some pros and cons to the metric system. So one of the things that is really good about the metric system is that it's popular. So what I mean by that is people around the world use the same system. If you say something is 3.2 meters long, there's no ambiguity. Everyone knows what that means. Um, it's also pretty organized. Um, which means that we don't have um, a lot of weird variation um, in sort of arbitrary ways. So some other measuring systems, there are a lot of, you know, obscure units and like some things might be um, factors of three different from other things and so on. Um, and we don't have to deal with that in the metric system as much. Um, another thing that's really nice about the me metric system is that there's lots of tens. Um, and even more so, there's lots of um, thousands. And so if you're doing an application where meters make sense, great. If you're using an application where kilometers or millimeters make sense, that's also really easy to fit into the system. Okay, so people often kind of fanboy the metric system. And I think that um, we should also be kind of honest what the downsides of the metric system um, are. So um, some of the cons of the metric system are, it's still somewhat arbitrary. So there isn't really anything all that special about a meter. A meter is a length that was chosen a long time ago for various reasons, but you know, it's not you know, given to us by some like physical consideration. It's just a size that someone picked, and now we have stuck with it to this day. Um, also, not everything works out nicely to be tens. So um, an example of this is um, joules are a metric unit of energy, as are calories. And yet they have some weird conversion between them, four point something. Um, and that's, you know, it comes from the fact that we have different sources for those units, but nevertheless, they're both metric units and they don't work together that nicely. Um, another example would be degrees Celsius versus Kelvins. These are two temperature scales and the difference between them is not a factor of 10. The difference is a shift. So you have to remember a, a random number to add to Celsius to get a Kelvin temperature. Okay. Um, also, uh, the units that we use are not always practical or perhaps I should say they're not always convenient for every application. So, um, other systems of units um, have a, very, a variety of sizes for whatever thing you might want to do. Um, so for example, um, in baking, there are cups and teaspoons and stuff, and those are just really convenient. So people use those for hundreds of years because like you had cups and teaspoons in your kitchen. Um, having to weigh out everything in grams may be more accurate, but it is not necessarily more convenient um, for an everyday person doing an everyday job. Um, a place where this uh, shows up in real life in science today is in astronomy, where um, a lot of non-standard units are actually in use. Like people will talk about for distances meters, but they'll also use light years, parsecs, astronomical units, um, and they can convert between all of these things, but none of them have a nice factor of 10 relationship. They're all, you know, some odd um, relationship between them. So um, those are, I think, a fair accounting of some of the downsides of the system. Overall, it makes sense to use the metric system. Uh, partly, like I would argue the most important one is that it's popular and that's what everyone uses. But um, whatever the reason, that is what we're going to use in this class. Another thing you need to know about the metric system is that um, there is, in fact, more than one. So um, in this class, we're going to use the SI system, which stands for International System in French, Système International. Um, and that is the one that is based on meters, kilograms, and seconds. Those are the basic units in the SI system. Um, in chemistry, they don't use the SI system typically. They use the CGS system, where everything is based on centimeters, grams, and seconds. Um, both metric, but it's just a matter of what you consider to be the basic parts um, in the system, so the basic units that you build other things from, which I'll talk about a little more in the next video.